With both Drive Club and MotorStorm, Evolution Studios has delivered some of the brightest and most memorable racers of the past decade. Now two years after joining forces with Codemasters, the team is back with Onrush, a fast-paced stampede of vehicles that crushes some of the genre's basic concepts to create a space that's all its own. The biggest departure Onrush takes is that it never has you cross a finish line. Instead, every mode has distinct objectives, and you have to work together with your team if you want to come out on top. At first, that may sound less involving, but in practice, Onrush is filled with adrenaline pumping moments, close calls, and intense back and forths between teams. If you get taken out or fall behind, you'll be brought right back to the center of the pack, so you're rarely far from the action. So much of Onrush is about speed, and the game encourages you to boost almost constantly. In order to maintain that speed, you have to keep your boost meter full. The most common way to do this is to eliminate fodder vehicles that regularly spawn in your path for the sole purpose of being demolished by you and the other racers. You'll get even more boost for taking out opponents, and you can also fill your reserves by taking jumps, doing tricks, and performing other reckless stunts. Meanwhile, boosting also fuels a secondary system called Rush, and once your Rush gauge is completely full, you can activate it for a temporary burst of intense speed. Surrounded by flames and accompanied by a resounding heavy metal scream, you'll blast forward, plow through anyone in your path, and trigger special abilities unique to each vehicle. Rushing at the wrong time can send you straight into a wall, but picking the right moment can quickly put you ahead while temporarily knocking your opponents out of the running. Takedowns in Onrush are important for filling your boost, but they also feel phenomenal. There's a brief focus on the impact of your destruction that does just enough to emphasize the hit without awkwardly halting the flow. Mechanically, there are smart nuances so that you always understand which driver should come out on top of a collision. But even so, getting knocked out can feel devastating and have you shouting at the screen as you wait to get back in the fray. The best of all are the air takedowns. Landing right on top of an opponent will crush them under your tires. Furthermore, you can release the boost mid-jump to get more hang time, then hit the boost as you fall to slam your car down on anyone unlucky enough to be in your shadow. To score. Those elements are common to every event in Onrush, but each of the four modes has completely different goals. Overdrive is the most basic, converting how much boost and rush your team uses into an overall score. Whoever boosts enough to reach the required score wins the round, and whoever wins the majority of rounds takes the entire match. Countdown is a race against the clock. Each team has a timer ticking down to zero, and you have to weave through gates to add time while trying to knock the opposing team out of the way. Whoever runs out of time loses, and like Overdrive, the overall win goes to the team that takes the most rounds. Next is Lockdown, which is essentially a high-speed king of the hill. As you race around the course, a moving zone appears on the track, and your team has to occupy the zone with the most vehicles long enough to capture it. Unlike the other two modes, there's a set amount of zones that you need to capture to win, leaving room for remarkable comebacks. The last of the bunch is Switch, and it's all about survival. Every player starts on motorcycles, with three switches that are basically lives, moving you sequentially through all four vehicle types after each death. When you lose your bike, you move up to a light buggy, then to a mid-sized car, and then to a heavy truck. As long as you have switches left, your highest priority is to avoid getting wrecked, but if you're unlucky enough to run out of switches and get placed in a truck, the mission changes to seek and destroy as you try to eliminate the other team's switches before they take out the rest of yours. It's a small selection of modes, but each has a completely different feel and requires different strategies, largely aided by switching between the game's eight vehicles. Not only are there predictable differences in size and speed, but each has a set of unique special abilities. For instance, one bike, the Blade, sets out a trail of fire while you rush, obliterating anyone who crosses it. In contrast, the other motorcycle, Outlaw, sends out shockwaves when you slam the ground, making surrounding vehicles more vulnerable and potentially knocking them into hazards. I'm having a good, good time. Some vehicles like the Charger are more suited to taking out opponents, while the Dynamo functions as support, giving extra boost to surrounding teammates. Or you can choose the Titan if you want to bolster your allies' defense while simultaneously slowing down rivals. These strengths suit different playstyles and have different advantages in each mode, so there's a lot of room to experiment with vehicles both individually and with team composition. Plus, if it seems like your first pick isn't working out, you can change mid-match while waiting to respawn.
All of this happens across a dozen different courses, including sunny beaches, ski resorts, deserts, rail yards, dams, and refineries. It's not a huge number, and the nature of doing continuous laps does make them become familiar rather quickly. However, each track has multiple paths and jumps to take advantage of, and getting to know all the routes can give you a leg up on the competition. Onrush does a lot to keep them from becoming stale by regularly changing up the time of day and weather conditions. A track you've grown accustomed to in broad daylight can feel significantly different in the dead of night or covered in snow, and these conditions can change dramatically in the course of the same race. While teamwork, competition, and online play are at the heart of Onrush, there's a good-sized campaign as well that'll keep you busy for 8 to 10 hours. It does a great job of introducing you to each of the different modes and vehicles before moving on to various themed groups of events. Each event also has an accompanying set of challenges, pushing you to master all the tools at your disposal. Whether you're playing alone or online, you're regularly rewarded. At the end of each match, a victory celebration highlights an MVP from the winning team, as well as other outstanding players, awarding you with medals and XP based on your performance. Every time you level up, you're given crates full of random cosmetic items to change the look of your driver and vehicles, including a range of different chassis, paint designs, and victory dances. You can also save up in-game currency to buy specific items you like, and thankfully, it all has to be earned in one way or another. There are no microtransactions. Visually, Onrush holds up through all of the chaos of cars flying through the air, parts tumbling, particle effects, and more happening at breakneck speeds. It's quite the pretty game as well, including a photo mode and single player to capture those perfect moments. Likewise, the music implementation is extremely well done, quickly shifting between the most exciting parts of the song selection, as well as phasing and warping to amplify events on screen. There's not much to damper all this mayhem. Perhaps the most annoying issue simply comes in moments where you spawn in a position where it's easy to crash or be taken out again, but that doesn't happen all too often. Some may also argue that there's a limited amount of content for launch, but as with Drive Club, the team has much more to come, including ranked play, which should open up in the next few weeks. Overall, Onrush does an admirable job of inventing an energetic new type of racer, mixing the thrill of high-speed carnage with a rewarding layer of strategy. All of its various parts complement each other extremely well. More than anything, it's just one of those games that's easy to jump into for a few quick matches, only to find yourself hooked in hours later, still going round after round. Excellent. Easy Allies reviews are made possible by generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to see our other videos. And consider becoming a patron to help us make more.